Hi. No, th thank you very much for, for that kind introduction and also for all the people who put their hand up. That's great uh, to know. Um, we are obviously very grateful because we know this is a very full and important agenda for you all as you're embarking on the new courses. Um, so we obviously thank ASLS for giving us this slot here. But with that in mind, um, what I would like to do is go through the presentation, give you all the information you need. I know you'll have questions as we go along, but in the interest of me not taking up valuable time for what's more valuable that's coming later, I'll take questions at the end, uh, if that's all right with everybody. Um, the other thing, just to let you know, I'm going to really be focusing on Scottish studies and it's, and it's great that we've got people here today who are currently involved. Um, but I'll also give you an update on some work that we're doing around the Scots language because I know there'll be lots of people here who will be interested to hear about that as well. So I'll be able to give you an update on that. Um, in terms of the Scottish Studies Award, um, really how it's come about has been um, through work that was done with the, um, Scot uh, the Scottish Studies Working Group. Um, and out of that group, there came a recommendation that SQA uh, and explore the possibility of developing an award in Scottish Studies. As a result of that recommendation, we did a lot of work with stakeholders to find out how much interest there war where it was, the kind of things that people would like to see in a qualification in Scottish studies. We were, we were really um, heartened by the amount of support that there was for developing the awards. So there was no question that we knew when we developed it that there would be uptake for the award. Um, in, in its first year, we started in uh, uh, August, the first centre started delivering. We have across the country, from the islands to the lowlands and the borders, we have over 50 schools who are delivering this year. That's actually <coughs> unprecedented for a new type of qualification, a new qualification um, that in actual fact was only published, the final arrangements in April. So it's been a real success story so far. Um, before I actually go into the award, I think it's very, very important for you to know what an award is because it's not the same as a national course. So before we start looking at it, it'd be good for you to have an idea in your head of, well, what is an award? An award is not a new qualification type that we've just made up for Scottish studies. Awards, we have, we have about 17, 18 awards that have been established for a long time. We're bringing out new awards as we go along. So Scottish studies sits in that kind of qualification category. A, a very important thing for you as teachers to realise is it's not linked to the annual cycle of the exam diet. Okay? It can be delivered very, very flexibly and it can be certificated throughout the year. And that's got important advantages because what it means is that you can deliver it over as short or as long a period as possible. For example, we have some colleges delivering who are delivering it in a full-time block. They're taking four or five months and they're delivering the full award in a block. We have schools who are delivering it across third and fourth year. We've got other schools who are delivering it across fourth and fifth year. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you can actually deliver the award itself, primarily because it is an award and not a national course. <coughs> I've mentioned there we've got schools delivering in S3 and you'll know that the national recommendations in terms of uh, working towards national courses is that you don't start them till S4. The national recommendations um, in terms of Scottish Government and Education Scotland are that you can start delivering awards anytime from S3 onwards and again that has got important implications and it also opens up the possibilities if you're wanting to deliver the award within your school. Awards are internally assessed and externally verified by SQA and the verification process for awards at the moment is our traditional central verification. So it's not part of the new um, nominee approach, it's centrally verified at the moment. Whether that will change in the future, we don't know. It, it, it will depend. Okay. 
So moving on then to the actual Scottish Studies Award, which is the main topic in, in, in question. Um, the Scottish Studies Award is similar in size to a national course. And you have to complete four units to get the course. Very importantly for yourselves, and this is where English departments, and I know a, a lot of those uh, schools who are currently delivering, it's actually the English department who are the ones who've embraced it first and taken it on board and got other colleagues on board. Um, so it incorporates units from the new national courses. And as I go along, I'll tell you where your units sit within the award but also from other existing national qualifications. We've got qualif other awards, have got units from them in, in the Scottish Studies Award, National Progression Awards, National Certificates, Skills for Work courses, for example. There are units from these within the award. There is also a new unit within the award, which is called Scottish Studies Scotland in Focus. And I hate the fact we've called it that because I keep telling people to focus on the Scotland and Focus unit and it doesn't quite uh, sound right, but we all thought this was a good name at the time and it's available at the moment at SCQF levels 3 and 5, 3 to 5. So it sits nicely with your national 3s to your national 5s this year. Um, we are looking at the possibility at the moment of developing at levels two and six, six uh, sitting uh, with higher, at a higher level. Um, but we're, we're doing a bit of work to, uh, around that and obviously we're also needing funding to do that, so it will be dependent. Um, but as soon as we know about that, that information will go out to centres. That will be important if you want to timetable next year at, higher, at, at level six. OK, <coughs> so the award itself... All these units that come from existing qualifications have been organised into different groups. And the two groups, and I've, I've got them in bold there, the two groups I think that are most of, in, of most interest to you are the language, the group language and literature, and arts and culture. Okay, language and literature has got within it the units from the English courses at levels three, four, and five. Arts and culture, uh, we've got media units in there as well. Society and environment has got a lot of the social subjects. And I know that a lot of schools who are delivering this year, it's the English departments and the social subjects departments that are, uh, that are involved in a cross-curricular way in delivery. Um, arts and culture, we have music, drama, all that ki the, these kind of units in there. And then finally, business industry and employment which is not available at level three, contains a lot of our skills for work units, about different job sectors that, that uh, uh, are, are high profile across Scotland. So within all of these groups, as you can see, um, we've got a number of subject areas, not just one subject area. Language and literature has got your English, obviously, and obviously arts and culture has media, which some of you might also be involved in delivering. So that's the structure of the award, and along with that, there's the additional Scotland in Focus unit. So, how do you get the award? Okay. Um, what you must do, what all learners must do to get the award, is they've got to ch do three units from across the groups. Okay? So that gives every school maximum choice in what combinations of units and um, the types of, of subjects that, that their learners might use to contribute to the award. Okay, so there's a lot of choice there. And then all of them must complete the new Scottish Studies Scotland in Focus unit. So that's mandatory. Everybody who does the award must do that unit. If you're already delivering <coughs> these units within your national courses, you can use that evidence uh, uh, that they've, they've achieved that unit and also use the unit to contribute to the award. So, for example, if you're delivering the analysis and evaluation unit and you are studying a Scottish text or a text in Scots, then and assessing it, 
you can use that unit to contribute towards the Scottish Studies Award. Um, you've not got a free choice in terms of the individual units. For example, you cannot use two units from the English course to contribute to the award. You can only use one. So you must, the, the units that you use as part of the award, you can only use one unit per subject. Okay? So it wouldn't be the case that you could deliver your National 5 course and both of those units, you would have two units which will go towards the award. Only one of those will go towards the award. And that was important because what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we, whatever we did with the Scottish Studies Award did not put additional restrictions on teachers in terms of delivering the course. Okay? Because if you could use the two units, there would be a great deal of pressure for you to use all those units and, and maybe deliver everything in a Scottish context, whereas you might want to also include other texts, other, other um, uh, uh, texts, plays, poetry, um, as part of your learning and teaching. So only one unit per subject, but also the three units have to be chosen from at least two of the different groups. Okay, because the, the whole philosophy behind it is interdisciplinary. So you can't just do units from language and lit or from language and literature. You must do units from another group as well. And you can see that's where the combination of an English department, uh, a history department, a geography department, that might work very, very well uh, in particular schools. So I, I've covered that, that one there. Okay. In terms of your um, English units, uh, and I'll, 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 I've, I've included in the presentation um, a, a link to uh, the, the page on SQE where you'll find all the information about it. Um, in terms of the English unit, when you're looking for, we'll take analysis and evaluation um, as a, an example. So in analysis and evaluation, you're looking at written and spoken texts. Um, so you could choose to do a text by a Scottish writer um, or a text in Scots and assess that and, and use that as your evidence to count towards the Scottish Studies Award. Or you could, for example, um, have them talking on a Scottish theme, do a talk on a Scottish theme, talk in Scots, write in a Scottish theme or write in Scots. So there's quite a lot of freedom for you to choose how well that fits in with what you currently do within your English courses. Okay, what am I on to next? Okay, now some of the units within the award have what we call a mandatory Scottish context. So I've given you some examples there. These are no-brainers. You can even tell by the title. Scottish history. Well, there you go. We know they will be covering Scottish history in that one. Another unit in the business industry and employment section, travel and tourism, Scotland. So they're definitely going to be doing Scottish context in these units. But, and you'll be aware of this because your units are, are up to level five, your units are context, not context free. You have to have a context for them, but they don't have a mandatory context. With those units, if you want them to count towards the award, learning and teaching, must cover a Scottish context, but very, very importantly, you must assess that Scottish context as part of your unit assessment. Okay? And in the documentation, the support notes for the award, there is guidance for every unit to, to, to let you see clearly what you must do in that unit for it to count towards the award. Um, so the, the Scottish context has to be assessed. It's not enough for you to teach a Scottish text and not assess that one, but look at, assess something they've done in, in relation to American or European literature. You have to assess the Scottish text as part of your unit assessment. Okay. Right, uh, this slide now, I have actually emailed Ronnie the presentation, and Ronnie, will you, uh, in one way or the other, you'll all get a copy of it, okay? So you can find the award and unit specifications, and these are the mandatory documents that must be followed when you're delivering the award at 
Um, it's a, what you call a friendly URL, whatever that stands for. And it's on our, our www.sqa.org.uk forward slash awards. And when you get to that page, there's a box at the top of the page which says wider achievement. You click on that and that takes you into the page which have got all the awards that contribute to wider achievement. Scottish Studies is kind of down near the bottom, so do scroll down if you can't find it first off. Um, <coughs> we have also got support notes for both the unit and the award, which gives you further guidance. They're not mandatory, but we've been very, very careful when we were developing the award to make sure that every bit of information in those is directly helpful for you. There isn't any, anything in there that's, that's, um, that, that's not there to give you help in terms of delivering the award. You'll get those on our secure site. So you need to go to your SQA coordinator and ask them to get the Scottish Studies Award and Unit Support Notes. Okay? If you've got any problems finding them, just get in touch with me and my email is in this presentation as well. Also on that site now, and anybody who's not started delivering is very lucky here, and those of you who have started delivering will be saying, why were they not on sooner? We now have unit assessment support packs for the Level 3 award, for the Level 3 Scotland and Focus unit, and we've got three support packs for the Level 4 unit. So if you also want to go and look at what a basic pass might look, at, look like in the Scotland and Focus unit, and also the types of activities you might want to do in that unit, then you'll find them on our secure site. Um, we are going to be publishing level five packs in December and a further two level three packs. So they'll all be up by that time. Okay. Um, what I haven't said to you, right, I'm going to take, take you back here. What I haven't really given you any detail about is the mandatory Scotland and Focus unit. That unit's been designed to be as open and flexible for you as possible. It does not have a mandatory context, except it must be a Scottish context. You can use that unit to further explore Scots, Scottish literature, Scottish writers, their influence, either at home, abroad or both. You could use that unit to investigate things to do with the local community. You could use that unit to look at, for example, the contribution of Scotland to the sciences, to business, to industry. So you've got a very, very wide range of context that you could possibly use that for. And I know that there are, um, in some of the schools that are delivering, it's the English department that's also leading on the Scotland and Focus unit. Not in every case, but where the resources there are available. So it's definitely something that you could also uh, use Maybe to do things that there's not room to do within your course, things that we'd really like to do, you can, you can do them within the Scotland and Focus unit. Um, the unit has two outcomes. They have to plan and complete an activity that's got a Scottish focus, and they have to communicate what they've learned about their Scottish focus during that activity. So the, the key thing is there, you've got freedom to choose whatever Scottish focus is most of interest to you and likely to be of interest to your students. A couple of practical considerations that you need to take into account when deciding to do the award. It's cross-curricular. It cannot be delivered in one department. So you need to have some kind of coordination within your school. Okay? I'll do the hierarchies in a wee minute. That's the thing. Um, so there needs to be... What, what some schools have done is they've set up an award team where... All the people involved in delivery get together, plan what they're doing, and then keep in touch throughout. Um, others have got a single person doing it, and I'm never uh, ceased to be amazed at English departments because a lot of a lot of the schools who've only got a single person coordinating it is the English department, as I say, is leading on it. But it's up to you how you coordinate it. But you need to be aware. It's not like a course where it's just all the one department delivering it. There needs to be planning put into it. Most of the units in the award are in a hierarchy, and you'll be familiar with that with your English course if you're doing the media course. But some of the units are not. Some of the units appear only at one or two levels. 
So when you're planning what units and what subjects you're doing, you need to take that into account in case, for example, you've got a learner who you think is National 4 but ends up overtaking the standards for National 5. You, you want to make sure there's a National 5 unit that you can put them in for in relation to the Scottish Studies Award. You also need to be thinking about timetabling. Are you going to do it over one year? Are you going to do it over two years? Are you going to, w w what bit are you going to do first? Um, so because there's a, a, a wide range of potential journeys for learners through that, including starting an S3 and finishing an S6. So you need to be thinking of what fits in with your school uh, and your timetable. You obviously need to put in place an internal verification system. Your, your individual units, which are part of other courses, you can verify those, obviously, as part of verifying the course, but somebody needs to check that they have been assessed and delivered in a Scottish context. Okay? And obviously, the, the additional Scotland and Focus unit, um, there needs to be verification, internal verification of that. And you need to be prepared if you're selected for external verification that you've got your samples and the material uh, ready for that. And I think this is the last one. Yes, it is. Um, finally, what support have we got available? Well, obviously, we've got the assessment support packs up now, which I know those who are delivering the award are finding helpful. We've also started publishing case studies. So if you want to see how some centres who are currently delivering, how they're actually doing it, what their plans are for delivery, there's two case studies up at the moment. There'll be another one going up at the end of this month. And then we'll be publishing a round of case studies um, in relation to different aspects of the award throughout the year. So there'll be lots of information there for you as in terms of how people are actually delivering. We had yesterday the first of three support network events for early adopters. And I know there are some people here today who are hearing me again. So that must be exciting for you because there's some people here who were at the event. Very good. We had 44 centres. Um, not everybody who's delivering this year could come along, but there'll be more of those. If you are delivering the Scottish Studies Award and you haven't let me know, please let me know because I'll be directly communicating to the centres who are delivering the dates and the agendas uh, and venues for these meetings. Okay? Um, we are also going to be, as a result of our support network events, identifying real candidate material for the Scotland and Focus unit, and also for Scottish context within the other units, and they will be published in time for session 14-15. Because the, the assessment support packs contain examples of what a candidate could produce, and we've done our best to make it look like a candidate has produced it, but there's nothing like the real thing, what has a candidate produced to help people understand the standards. And finally, if you've got any queries about the award, and very importantly, if you have started delivering and you haven't already let me know, could you please let me know, okay? So any queries, I'm also happy to come out to schools and talk to people who might be involved within your school. But if everybody in the room asked me, I wouldn't be able to come out to everybody because there's too many people here. So if, say for example, you're wanting me to come and talk to your senior management team, you're interested in delivering it, you want them to know all about it, I'm happy to come out and do that for you. And finally, because I think I'm nearly running on, um, Scots language. When we published the Scottish Studies Award, we did get quite a bit of feedback from people saying, why is there not a distinct Scots language unit in that award? It is a Scottish Studies Award, obviously. Um, partly that was due to the design of the qualification and the guidance that we got from the Scottish Studies Working Group because we were told we don't want you to develop a whole pile of new units. We want you to use units that already exist because we don't want to overburden teachers. teachers. So we don't currently have a Scots language course. We don't currently have Scots language units. So we couldn't put one in because we were told don't be developing new units. One new unit for overarching purposes but use units that are already being delivered. But because we got quite a bit of feedback about that, what we decided to do is we put out a survey 
Scots Language Survey, and I think we got the results of that. Was that the end of June? The end of June. So it was out for the month of end of May um, till the end of June. And we've got a lot of very useful feedback, I think, particularly in the area of what might be in Scots language provision and also who it might be relevant for. <coughs> However, we didn't get an awful lot of information that gave us any sense of whether or not schools would deliver it or colleges would deliver it. And um, because the majority of people who replied to the survey were not in schools and not in a position to give us that information. They said, well, that's not relevant to us. Um, so what we've done is we have issued another survey to centres to look at determining uptake for such a qualification. And we're also currently in negotiation, in, in negotiation for funding for the qualification as well. But I want to make it quite clear, this qualification will not be a national course with an exam. It is likely that we start off with a unit or units looking at different aspects of Scottish language, that we nest them within the Scottish Studies Award or people would be free to do them on a freestanding basis. Or we may actually create an award in Scots, something like that. So it's not going to be a national examinable course at the moment because practically speaking, we would not be able to do that and people wouldn't be able to deliver it at the moment. But if there's enough interest in that and uptake of that, we don't know where that will go in the future. And I'll be letting uh, Ronnie know uh, when we get the results uh, of that and when we find out whether or not we're going to get funding to develop that. And I may well be calling on people from this group to become part of the qualification design team. Okay.